All right, super coaches, strap in, because I guess round six is upon us. That's right, round five's in the rearview mirror. This is the Supercoach AFL podcast. You're in and out guide to the greatest game on earth. Remember, footy's back. That's right. I'm your host, James Clements. Joining me are two of the smartest, smartest brains in the Supercoach world. We've got Patch over there. What's going on, Patch? Hello. I'm all right. I'm good. I love this. Um, that good. you're. I love that you're back again. You're like, just everyone got their fill of Patch week one. And it's like, we're going to have him back. This is just too good. So you feeling the vibes? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm feel. I'm hopefully feeling like Essendon is going to get less slander this week. <laughs> they deserve um, it less after a decent win, and you know a few other clubs not doing qu- quite as well. <laughs> uh, no, I've got no idea at, who you're referring to. If I look at my my Richmond and Carlton supporting <laughs> co-host, uh, go Dons. Nice one. We do have a uh, look. Carlton did lose to Adelaide. That's fine. Adelaide. That's maybe. fine. He says, <laughs> just with pain in his voice. It's fine. I, I promise. So many internal tears, but at least it's not at West Coast. Hey, uh, what's going uh, yeah. on, Al Payton? Yeah. Yeah, it was Harley Reid. I mean, just for our super coach teams. Uh, yeah, I wasn't paying much attention to the, the rest of the result there, but um, yikes. Yeah, the Richmond injury list is uh, getting out of control. Sounds like excuses to me, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, but that's right. We've got Al and Patch to talk through a whole mess of super coach today. And we're also going to bring on our man, Dan. In place of the Phantom, who has uh, taken at least a well-earned little bit of a break, which is kind of nice, I guess. But either way, remember, you can sign up to Supercoach Plus, get right around Code Sports as well for all your Supercoach needs. And what else? You can check out the AFL Today Show as well for way more news gear. But before we do anything else, how was your round five patch? Yeah, what it was, was your, right. What was your score? How'd you go? I cracked the 2,000 Very somehow, nice. despite the odds. 2,026 um, was... Was the uh, the number I ended up with? So, back in the top one thousand, can't complain. Very good, Al. Uh, now, last week you mentioned the great uh, surf punk rock uh, outfit three eleven, and this week I've gone with uh, sort of similar vibe in terms of uh, music sound. The great uh, Bowling for Soup and uh, nineteen eighty five. Uh, which just drops me about three hundred spots, but six oh one overall. So still pretty happy with where I'm sitting. I'm very much enjoying all these music references. <laughs> this is great. Bowling <laughs> for Soup. What a what a throwback there, Al. That was very good. 1985. I got 1916 just because I managed to turn myself all upside down. I managed to, you know, snag the Gornicus vice captain, but uh, Tom Green, we'll get to him in a second because we're going to do some heroes and villains. Can I start there? Hero, Max Gorn. There is nothing better in Supercoach than going, right, now the vice captain, I'll take it. If someone scores more than this, it's okay because, look, you get that on the big jobs. First game of the round. Exactly. There's nothing better than that Thursday night footy, smash it, knock it in. 138 from Max Gorn. Thank you very much. The villain, however, was my man Tom Green, my fellow Ginge. Uh, really let me down on a couple of fronts. A, scoring, because that sucked. And B, going head-to-head against Al and Jack Steele. So easily a villain for me. What about you there, Mac? Uh, Patch, what do you reckon? Uh, so hero, Jake Stringer from a football sense, uh, <laughs> just sinking it from outside 50 to just sink the dog's hearts was lovely. Um, I had Big Max down. Um, as the uh, VC as well. He was a big hero, but the she's on Sunday um, bring it home with a 150-odd. God God bless that man. I love it. What about you, villain? Uh, villain is the sub-vest, Ooh, just generally yeah. the sub-vest. Um, Riley Sanders got hit with a red one. Um, Kobe McKercher got hit with the red one. Jai Clark, the green one. It was just... Jack Carroll as well. Jack Carroll, the green one. It was just a bad time for people wearing vests. Um, <laughs> it is vest weather, uh, sweater weather, but nah, don't want it in my super coach side. Long pay, sleeves or nothing. I'll pay you that. Vests, look, we've got uh, on an AFL today, one of our compatriots there, Alex, just a really, really, really big into his vests. I just can't stand vests. Nah. Not a vest guy, nah. man. Not a vest guy. Al, who was your hero? Yeah, well, I mean, I could have mentioned Max as well, and just especially that last quarter. He was sort of uh, heading towards around maybe a 115, 120 score, and we're thinking, oh, are we going to take this VC? And he just put it beyond doubt with a, a massive last term, kicked a nice goal, uh, which saved us really because if he hadn't have uh, scored that well, it might have gone back to a green type or Marcus Bontempelli, who had – we had a few um, big-name, big-budget players who underperformed. So thank you very much, Max. I love Sheasel as well, number one in the AFL for disposals. After five rounds, so he's absolutely killing it. And again, seagull, that we ask, seagull role. Why don't we talk about this guy when we're thinking about captains uh, every week? So I'm sure we'll touch on that later. But I'll go with Harley Reid. His first ton, probably of many over his career, and did 
give me something to take out of that uh, Richmond West Coast game, <laughs> which was pretty painful to watch. But yeah, he was he was fantastic. Obviously, home crowd lapping it up over there in Perth. And my villain, I'm going with Luke Jackson. Ooh. Um, we thought we got another week without. Uh, well, we did get another week without Sean Darcy. They held him back and thought, here we go, we get uh, another week of ton sort of scoring from Jacko, but just the 72, he actually dropped 36 K. He's got a break even of 156 this week. So he's starting to become a bit of a problem. I don't know. I was happy just to have him sitting there and not really worry about him and maybe assess in three or four weeks, but might have to um, start wondering what do I do with Jacko? It is a problem. Yo, I'll solve it. Check out this hook while Patch revolves it. There we go. <laughs> the, the villains was actually like a tough one for me as well this week. Cause I'm Petrarca, Tom Green, Jackson, all really big underperformers, which really hurt me personally, <laughs> just <laughs> right in my heart. So villains left, right, and centre. And I think, yeah, what, 72s, 59 for Trark. It was just mm. brutal gear across the board. But either way, uh, let's do some super coach news, injury suspensions gear. Remember, we still have one more week of best 18 with Melbourne and Richmond on the bye this week, Al. Feeling good about the bye? Is this a good time for your Tigers to get the bye? Uh, yeah, I think any time is a good time for Richmond to get the buy at the moment. Um, yeah, not going to hurt us too much in Supercoach. Max Gorn, obviously the big one missing, and uh, Nick Vlostone for you as well, but uh, not too many Richmond-relevant players. But, um, I mean, I think I might have mozzed us by talking about how we haven't had a lot of injuries and suspensions to deal with this year, and then they all sort of uh, the big truck came through on the weekend and wiped out a bunch of Supercoach players. Colby McKercher, the big one, subbed out as a... Uh, Patch mentioned just the six super coach points, rib injury. Still haven't heard really any update about how that's tracking, so we'll keep a close eye on that. North, uh, last night, Alistair Clarkson sort of floated he's still a chance to play this week, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, that didn't look good. Obviously, not great to have that score on field. Tom Liberatore, weird scenes going on. Yeah, that was concerning. That was not fun for anyone involved. No, no. So um, Bulldogs putting him in the concussion protocol. So he's out this week. Real um, blow if you've got him in your team. Matt Crouch, uh, as I've got him, suspended for one week. Although Zach Butters got away with his high bump, thank goodness. I'm not exactly sure how, but um, maybe uh, the MRO plays super coach because i um, happy to have Zach still available. Um, so, yeah, a few few things going on there. And then, of course, you would mentioned the bye. We get a whole bunch of uh, Sydney and Collingwood players yeah. um, who we can pick this week. We do. Um, so I had a quick look through the list at a couple of Sydney guys and one Collingwood player. Because Collingwood's just not been a fantasy relevant side uh, so far this year. Um, but yeah, just just to briefly run through them, I want to get your thoughts on these guys. Isaac Heaney, 638k, averaging 144. Is he good? Should we get him? <laughs> oh yeah. A, yes. Um, B, yeah. I mean, good question for teams who don't have Heaney. Does he have to be your number one priority now? I mean, he's mine, if that answers your question. Yeah, I think it does. James is someone who also was an idiot and didn't pick him. Initially, you... but I did trade him in just before his price rise, price rise which was like my favourite sort of vibe here. I feel like the Heen machine, you get one more look, right, before it just gets almost impossible to bring him in and it gets really, really tough. But if he has that one week where it's just a little bit of a downer, Patch might be sitting there going, I told you. I told you. See, what are we going to do? And it might just sort of smooth it out. And, and we've seen, you know, Tom Green's had a, a yeah. few bad scores. Petrarca's had a bad score. Bont's had a bad score. Like these players will have scores that will cause their price to tumble, even if it's a one-week aberration. So that's, I don't know, food for thought for people like me who are looking to bring him in. Maybe he gets cheaper. Maybe he also goes to 800K. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, you, you sort of imagine, like you say, with like a Tom Green, they're just going to score 140s every week forever. But history shows it doesn't happen, and we saw it on the weekend. So, But, yeah, it's tough just waiting for them to uh, to drop that bad game if you don't have them. Yeah. Um, Errol Gould, uh, sorry, Nick Dacos uh, next on my list. If you didn't start Nick Dacos, well done. Yeah. You said it wasn't going to happen. He wasn't going to uh, hurt us too much. He was going to drop in price, going to get tagged by Finn McGuinness. You know, deal with a buy. You were right. Well done if you didn't start him. He's 556K, averaging 106. No reason not to pick him if you were smart enough to, to give him a miss to start with, right? Yeah, I think you get him now. There was some uh, suggestion that maybe Willem Drew could has sort of shown him some attention in the past, but I think Drew's just uh, playing, you know, he's going in and getting the ball this year, not really yeah. worrying about tagging sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, Dacos is a great price. Um, his break even sort of very gettable. So yep. um, now's the time. Yep, um, Errol Goulden, uh, 607K, averaging 107, but 117 in his last three. I have lots of plans with Errol Goulden. Most of them involve just getting him on my team. Simple as that, right? I think he's fantastic. The 607 and a lot of what I'm sort of like 
projecting to sort of do this week, which I'll get to later, mm -hmm. is with an eye to get Goulden down the track and just sort of like fingers crossed like one sort of mediocre-ish game this week and away we go. It's sort of very similar to the uh, so the Dacos corollary here. If you were brave enough not to start with Nick Dacos, like you've been rewarded, which is kind of cool. I spent so much time this preseason going, Errol Goulden's in my team, and then I didn't. A couple of weird sort of wonky scores here and there, and I'm like, all right, this should be the time where he sort of just kicks into high gear. I want one more low score, though, just to knock it yep. down a little bit more to make him even more gettable. So I think... Goulden's approach, like even though we've got Taylor Adams, Luke Parker back as well, right? Like I still think he'll be knocking him out of the park, Al. Yeah, no, I think he's someone you would want in your final team. So, yeah, now's the time to sort of start looking at that price and thinking this might be about as cheap as we can get him. Or like you say, can you hold out for one more week? I think they've got Suns this week and then Hawthorne. So, yep. um, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to wait till after the Hawks game. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Tay-Tay, um, Taylor Adams, 437K. Averaging 97 with one score of 97. Um, <laughs> we've still got one more week before his price goes anywhere. Forward eligible, which we love. Do you go now or do you wait? I think you got to wait. I just don't trust the – look, at times like last year, he was like, cool, great. Love the uh, forward eligibility as well, I think, last year, right? And just he's like one of those sort of guys where you're like, yeah, can go big, but also there's a little bit more inconsistency, I feel, Al. Yeah, no, definitely wouldn't be jumping on just one game. If he, yep. you know, has a big score this week, you might uh, have to think about him next week. But, um, yeah, not not uh, falling over myself to get Taylor at this stage. Yep. And then the other one, Chad Warner at 537K Ooh. is a bit of a bit of an X factor, bit of uh, for your bargain basement um, hunters out there. Averaging 102, which isn't setting the world on fire, but hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I think that, that's a that's a good uh, summary of where <laughs> we sit on, uh, <laughs> so, on Chad. Yeah. So he started 118, nice 120, 125, then ripped off the 102. Like that Essendon game, he came alive in like the mm. last like quarter basically. Um, but then 73 against the Tigers, 96 against the Eagles. It sort of feels like he could probably have like maybe just an, one more tough one against the Suns, very similar to what we might be looking at with, with Goulden. I actually don't mind Warner as a – Point of difference, a good pod Yudley, like later down the track. I reckon after this one week, he might also be another bit of a bargain for me. Mm. I might just end up with too many swans though. So yeah, it's a tricky question of balancing who can you afford, but then also if you bring in someone now, they're probably going to be in your team for the rest of the year. Um, and, you know, is someone like Chad Warner going to be in the top end of midfield is when people yeah. might be going to get a, a Goulden or a Petrarca um, in the next few weeks. So he's yeah. probably a rung below those guys. Yeah. And he's priced that way as well. <laughs> Righto, stocks up, stocks down after round five. Uh, very easy for me. Sam Walsh, watching him in person for his yeah, first well. game. Obviously, you get to sort of wait one more week. That was his first game of the season, coming back from back issues. But he was electric, 34 touches, just was everywhere. And I think we've sort of looked at Carlton all year, right, in terms of like super coach stuff. Not wildly relevant here and there. It's apart from maybe Zach Williams, and that's about it, right? Um We've sort of floated the idea of Harry Mackay. Just that was bad, but still, he was on. He was up and <laughs> about really it, early though in that game. It Al, was fun saying. while it lasted. It was it was fun while it was happening. But Sam Walsh, just the amount of the ball that he gets is like this is great. He's like probably after next week I'll be trying my absolute hardest to get him into the side. So stocks up definitely. Al, what about you? Yeah, well, we just talked about who can finish in the top end, and I think he's definitely a candidate and pretty good price. Um, starting the year after a little bit of uh, some injury issues last year. Obviously, interrupted preseason, which can be a bit of an issue, come back to bite people, but obviously um, an amazing score on the weekend. But, yeah, definitely I would wait. He's got the Giants this week, which is a pretty tough midfield matchup. If he goes well again, then, uh, yeah, he'll be definitely very high on the radar. Nice one. Patch, who are you going to look at for stocks up? Stocks up on Elliot Yo, who I've been, Yo. like, looking at from a distance for a little while and never seriously looking to bring him in. And then he scored 150 odd on the weekend against the Tigers. And oh boy, does he look back. He's playing as a full time mid, um, grunt midfielder. Very good. And he's also still cheap for a bloke averaging 120, is it? Um, at 550 odd K. Um, oh, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. 
We talked about it just uh, off air before that the uh, person who, the coach who won the weekly prize for the, the highest score actually had Yo as captain and he had Zach Butters as vice. So he's passed on the 130. Um, we think maybe he could see the uh, potential to, to get the uh, the $1,000 prize for the week um, with the last game of the round and, uh, as you say, risk it for the biscuit. And he's put the C on Elliot Yo and, uh, wow, did that pay off. Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's someone I'm really looking at, but in, you know, in practice, the, the bloke's um most stocks up on are the ones coming off the buy. Um, so we'll be looking very closely at Haney and Goulden. Al, your stock's up. Um, I'll, uh, I won't spend too long on it because we'll have our rookie expert coming on soon, but the uh, the Gold Coast kids, well, Sam Close, he's not really a kid, but um, one of the most uh, extreme break-evens I've ever seen in Supercoach was one minus 174, uh, could potentially break the record for the highest ever price rise after his third game. This week, so most of us, so a lot of people got him last week. If you didn't, now make sure you get him this week. And his teammate, Will Graham, going, uh, if close he wasn't around, then we'd be all over him as well. So a um, couple of really good cheapies to jump on this week. You're about to go right up in price. Nice, yeah. <clears throat> it was like splitting the two last week. It's like I end up with Will Graham. Don't know why. Just I think he just slotted into the mid-defender, right? So that was yeah. kind of like the happy sort of middle ground for me. <laughs> so it made it work. Uh, stock's down. Riley Sanders, obviously, for me. It's just a tough look. We'll talk about this again later, but just the constant stress of someone getting bevoed, <laughs> it just sucks. I'm just like, I'm out. He sort of showed us a little bit, and he scored 46 on the weekend. That came after, like, a couple of, like, handy games. He had the 99 against the Suns. He had 82 against Geelong. But the break even now gets to 49, and if he gets bevoed one more time, you're suddenly losing money. And he's at a half-decent sort of price point now if you're going to move on from him. So 310, you wouldn't mind a little bit more. But the threat of being bevoed just means stocks right down for me on Riley Sanders. What about you, Patch? Uh, stocks down for me, LDU. I, I know he's been talked about a lot, but like he's just, I don't know how palatable it can be. You know, we've talked about potentially holding him and being someone we'd look at to bring in, but no, nah, I'm, I'm off that train now. I, I think he's, I think he's out of here. Tough yeah. one. 87 against Geelong and GMHBA came after 88 and 67. That is, uh, Aldi spew. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Absolutely brutal gear. Um, yeah, it feels like low-hanging fruit, but, I, yeah, he's just, you know, especially that we've got a lot of players that are about to come down in price. I think the time to make as much money as you can and cut and run. Nice one. Al, stocks down? Oh, yeah, I'd add um, Jordan Dawson to that list too. If you've Ooh. held him for this long, um, you know, you probably will turn around at some stage, but at a certain point you just have to cut your losses and um, and jump off and wait till some kind of form turnaround and maybe think about um, getting back on there. I've got Colby McKercher, which is hard on. Uh, Kitty just got smashed and uh, sent to hospital, but just that his break even's now 101. So um, I'd prefer to keep someone like Sanders, who, I mean, you're always running the gauntlet with Bevo, but if he stays out on the field, I think he can get that 49 break even. But 101 is going to be very difficult. Uh, McKercher already has lost a little bit of money. So that's really why we picked these kids in the first place. McKercher someone I thought I'd have in my team for a lot longer, but um, he's probably an ideal candidate to, to move out this week. Yeah, I wanted to keep Sanders as well. Like, this is the tough part because I didn't start with McKercher. Um, <clears throat> Sanders ahead of Sharp, ahead of Carroll, ahead of Jai Clark. Jai Clark, you can probably boot, but at the same time, it's like he's 183 who sort of cares at that point, right? Okay. So bit of a tough one. Right, we'll talk more about Bubble Boys and co with our very special guest, Dan Batten, right after this. All right, here we go. That's right. We've replaced Phantom with a bloke whose face you can actually see if you're watching this on the old YouTube or uh, wherever you watch your videos. It's Dan Batten. What's going on, Dan? Look, it's not a face you want to see, though, but uh, glad to be on. Hopefully I can uh, go a bit better than the Phantom. Very nice. I do love the moustache, though. That's what it's all about. It just <laughs> sells the bu the bubble just as much as you possibly can. Uh, really interesting sort of setup for this week, right, with the bubble. Al, how are you feeling about some of these names it's just, we talked about it on last week's show, just the simple idea of like, you might want to move on somebody early because we'd have these sorts of guys and these problems this week where you might have too many dudes, one of my favorite phrases, uh, to sort of fit in, right? And that's where we've found ourselves. Yeah, well, if you didn't go early last week, um, even if you used the boost this week, you could be potentially using all your trades, which means mm. maybe that is the way to go. But how would you rank these guys Um Sam Close, I mean, we probably don't really need to talk about him. You need yeah. to get him. What about Will Graham and Charlie Combin? They've both got really uh, low, low, low break-evens. Um, do we need all these guys to get in and uh, 
get us some quick cash over the next few weeks? It's a good question. I'd say one, closey, two, daylight, three, daylight, four, daylight, because <laughs> closey, what, negative 174 break even. As you said before, he's an absolute must have. He, you know, dominated, or didn't actually, no, he didn't really dominate too much in the VFL last year, but his numbers this year has been, been incredible. Uses the ball so well, so he can score well, even if he's not getting a heap of it. And he's been kicking goals as well, as we saw on the weekend. So, but I think that the clear number two for me is Will Graham. It looks like the Suns are going to keep playing him. Highly touted prospect, uh, deaf mid as well, which is great for Supercoach, um, particularly when you've got guys like McKercher who might you might want to trade, guys like Massimo D'Ambrosio, a few options there to go to and also provide some flexibility with guys like Matt Roberts also getting uh, DPP next week. Uh, McKercher as well probably will get that, but I think a lot of people will chop in before he gets it. I'm still a little bit undecided on Charlie Combin. I was talking to Al uh, off air that, you know, are we sure that Combin's going to make more than 100K? We, we all thought that Massimo D'Ambrosio was an absolute must-have uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he's probably made 100K or so. He's been pretty solid. But, yeah, that's probably what you know, we, we might expect from Combin if he's scoring 65, 70s. But certainly his first two games have been really good. He's at that annoying price point as well, Combin, yeah. right? He's like over the 220 mark. And it just makes it that little bit more difficult to go from one of the rookies that has underperformed already, like a Jai Clark or somebody like that, right? Mm. You suddenly have to find money rather than like an actual downgrade. So it makes it that much tougher. Yeah, that's a, that's a frustrating thing. Like, yeah, so if, if you're looking to bring in a premium, like I'm definitely looking at Patches Man, Elliot Yo this week. Yo! Do you, do you go for Combin or do you go for a guy like Biggie Newen who's played one game, scored 89 in his first game, looked very good. But at the same time, his job security is probably pretty shaky. So, yeah, it's just the, the things that we'll have to, to weigh out this week. Nice one. What about the names that we want to boot? What Who are we looking at in terms of some of the low-price folks? Yeah. Who we just want to uh, turf. I think it's probably McKercher, unfortunately. You know, he didn't do much wrong. He just got uh, copped a heavy hit, but he's probably gone. Uh, in my team, I'm, I'm looking at maybe Cadman, those who have, have Cadman. Definitely Jack Carroll as well. So his break even is getting a lot closer to his average after he was a sub and, you know, who knows how long he'll stay in that blue side. So there, there's a few, I think. Sanders as well. I, I, I do want to probably, you know, trade others before Sanders though because we've seen his ceiling. He can score 90s and he, he looked pretty, you know, peeved about being uh, made the sub on the weekend. Apparently throw, threw the toys out of the cot. So, you know, he, he might be every chance to bounce back. And we know Libby this week, you'd think they uh, yeah. can afford to pull him out, although, as we keep saying, this is Bebo. Um, what about uh, <laughs> the man you were really uh, pushing it pre-season down the highway, Jai Clark? Um, uh, I rolled the dice and put him on the field this weekend, uh, scored two points. Um, yeah, we talk about break-evens and things. His is, I think, 70-something. Uh, has he scored that all year? He's Probably has to go, but as um, James mentioned, you're not getting a back for him. That's right, yeah. And I think actually a few weeks ago when I was on this show, I had advocated trading him out even though I rated him I so know. high. And that, <laughs> that might have been a good move in hindsight. But, yeah, I think Jai Clark, yeah, it's probably time to go if you can get to that premium upgrade or if you don't mind spent shelling that 40K in order to get Combin. But at the same time, it's probably others that if you're looking to get a premium, it's a lot easier to trade someone else who's of higher, higher value than Jai Clark, who's only sitting in 180K. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned Cadman because, like, what, they've got the Blues this week. Yeah. And it sort of feels like they have defensive issues, shall we say, Carlton, and especially with, like, the likes of Weeders and co going, right, how do we stop Jesse Hogan? And then Cadman could be the guy who just sort of pops up out of nowhere and, like, snags, like, two or three at Marvel, feeling pretty good about himself, and he sort of just keeps afloat for one more week where you're like, all right, we nailed that. And same thing with Carroll, right? I think yeah. for Jack Carroll with all the injuries that Carlton copped on the weekend, so they lose McGovern. Chera was already a late scratching for that game and they lost Saad. Maybe there's a little bit more room in the midfield for Carroll, but it's not sort of certain, which is always the big problem, I think, for Jack Carroll. But he is Patrick Cripps' best mate, so we're just going <laughs> to lean on that for one more week, I reckon. <laughs> Simple as that. All right. What about the one gamers, Al? What are, who are we looking at who have, you know, we don't really want to go too early on some of these folks right now. But there's a couple of names floating around. Uh, well, I think Biggie's the main one uh, yeah. at North. There's another guy at North who a lot of us picked last year. It didn't really work out in uh, Blake <laughs> Drury, but he looked okay yesterday. And then there's a couple of Tigers. We don't really want to talk too much about them, but who have actually played a couple of games, but price is still pretty low. Someone like a Kane McAuliffe who looks like he'll get a decent run in the midfield there, and he, he's 
um, his break evens back in the negatives, but not like these other guys we're talking about. You're not going Black Drury after one game again, Al. Did you do that <laughs> no, last no year? I'm definitely not doing that. <laughs> Average about 15, I think, from from that point on, as a lot of super coaches would have been in that boat. But yeah, I think it's definitely worth watching those guys, big and new, and I'll have a big watch on. Might even consider bringing him in this week if it means uh, not having to trade a, a guy like Cadman um, instead. So. Yeah, I definitely one to watch. I think uh, Lafau as well. Uh, Tim's man actually could be pretty solid. I mean, he's got a 108 in his three weeks score. He'll have that for another two weeks now in his rolling average. So that's uh, pretty promising. And and Kane McAuliffe. I mean, who else are the Tigers going to play in the midfield? So Thompson yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, another one of my high price rookie men. But yeah, I think that Kane McAuliffe is a, another pretty solid option as well. Uh, has Good junior numbers, you know, uh, it wouldn't be a rookie segment without you know, mentioning South Australia junior numbers. So <laughs> one of another of the Phantoms men there. And yeah, I think he could be a pretty solid option the week after. Very nice. It's also nice to see that uh, Mac Andrew on the bubble as well at that annoying 300 plus. <clears throat> but God, he's been good. I just want to sort of go, oh man, just annoying that I, I wish it was cheaper just because you'd like slot him straight in. But oh, well, tough scenes. All right. Any other names you want to throw out there, Dan? I think that's uh, about it. Yeah, another one that's sort of on the on the bubble this week is Mitch Georgiadis. He's had a, a pretty solid start, but I don't think you, you'd, you'd be picking him over Charlie Combin. Charlie Combin's got that, that interceptor role, took about five intercept marks on the weekend, was absolutely clunking them, and there's going to be plenty of footy back there for the Roos. So, yeah, another reason why he's probably the better option there. Nice one. Awesome. You can go read Dan Batten's stuff all the way across all the Supercoach gear in, uh, what, codesports.com.au? GeelongAdvertiser.com. And, and Geelong Advertiser. We'll see how Jai Clark's tracking for next week. <laughs> Get right around him. All right, we'll bring Patch back in and talk some captains right after this. All right, big thanks to Dan Bat, and That was very fun. You can always see his breakdowns of all things Supercoach at CodeSports.com. But the cool part is we brought back Patch. What's going on, Patch? How are you feeling about this hey. captain's week this week? I Look, I, I hope that my VC once again goes nuts on a Thursday night and I don't have to think about it ever again. Very nice. So my starting point there is it's a tougher week, Al. It's a much tougher week. You don't have a Gornicus or Relius Maximus like to throw in there to reverse his name because we've got the Dogs Saints Thursday night, which you could go Bont if you're really, really keen, but I don't know how we feel about Bont up against the Saints. Well, all of a sudden, yeah, some of these uh, reliable guys you just don't feel quite as confident on, like a Bont or a Tim English was also uh, rubbish last week. Um, not a great result for people brought him in for Brodie Grundy, which Patch did counsel against. Hey. Uh, people weren't obviously I watching did. that. but um, I mean, yeah, I, I even... said that. I said that Blake, drew, um, that, um, Blake Howes would score 60-odd. He did. <laughs> this is the yeah. man. Well, he's back Pat's, on, but just, just Patch Stradamus. There we go. Maybe, not bad, not bad. maybe. Sorry, I just sorry to interrupt. I did some receipts out. <laughs> um, yeah, Petraka, the other one, obviously, he was a bit disappointing. But I think, um, I mean, I've got Jack Steele on Friday night as well. But Bont doesn't play bad games very often. And looking up his record, averaging one fifty-five in his last three against the Saints, playing back under the roof. At Marvel, I think that's enough at least to put the VC on him. Nice. That's yeah. pretty good. I feel like he'd be stinging from the criticism during the week as well. I think he's one that will try and stand up and, you know, the Saints will put work into him, but I I would be backing him in again. 100%. You love that. Anytime you can average 150 against a team, I feel like you should be backing that one. I like that. The problem is I don't have Bond because I'm an idiot. God, this just bites me every time. My look at this one for this week is Tom Green against the Blues at Marvel. Uh, with Coniglio possibly, probably, definitely out, yeah. uh, just sort of opens it up a little bit more. He, I think he ripped off a pretty big score against them last year. Yeah, 145. 145 against them last year at Marble as well. Uh, I think we saw as well with the Blues the sort of defensive midfield pressure. Not great. That cost them the game, really. So wouldn't mind sort of rolling the dice with him and then probably into the Sheasel. That's right, the Ooh. Sheasel. Let's go. Had 120 against... Uh, who the Roos got this week? Hawthorne. Against the Hawks. Hawthorne. That was at, I think, the Utahs, so down there in Tassie. This one's at Marvel. I don't mind this. I think this will be a back and forth affair. Are, are you worried by the Finn McGuinness tag for the Shees? Did they throw him to Shees? That's the thing. They played him forward last week to, sure. to run, you know, on a few guys. I Maybe. I don't know what they do. But it's a tricky one. Flip side, just go to Heaney. Same thing on Sunday. You can either go. It's the two Sunday games, boom. So... I don't mind that. Sydney play Gold Coast, which is always a bit weird, but I think when Gold Coast go to the SCG, 
not great results. Uh, Swans don't mind it there as well. Heaney could just go massive again. So I'd probably feel more confident if I had Bond with a VC on Bond. But then Tom Green, feel okay about that. And then Heaney and Sheezle are pretty good options for me. How are you feeling, Al? Yeah, no, I like all of those. Um, yeah, that Gold Coast Sydney game. Um, looking forward to that. Actually, that should be uh, a good one, and plenty of names that you could consider there. Someone like a Matt Rowell, even um, Tuk Miller, maybe is back uh, in the in the high scores on the weekend. But uh, yeah, hard to go past Heaney based on his record so far. If anyone has Tom Stewart, he scored 153 last time uh, the Cats played Brisbane. Oh, it's not bad. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> so, what do you think the best option is for like? If you're just going to go with a C this week, who do you like the most? Jake Stringer? Uh, uh, well, in a similar <laughs> vein, Zach Merritt's on my yeah. list um, because he's just been in rip-snorting form. Um, you know, the bom- the Bombers have their tails up. Um, maybe it comes crashing down, but I don't think Merritt's score comes crashing down with it. Said with the same voice that somebody who said Bont was a certainty for 170 last week. Um, so I think if I had him... I'd be I'd be VC steel C merit, get it out of the way early. Um, I don't, so I'm probably captaining Heaney, but I I really like Zach Merritt as a as someone to try and save up and trade in for, um, save up for and trade in, or as someone to to captain if you you're smart enough to. You look at him that um, uh, the Crows midfield on the weekend. They really shook things up a bit, and you know, Dawson was in the forward line and Laird mm. and Crouch was on the bench for most of the game. It seemed like um, so they're giving you know Saligo and Rankin got heaps of centre yeah. bounce time. You know, getting some more kids through there, which I think is a right move. It worked yeah, for them on the weekend. But in terms of um, you know shutting down a player like we saw with Sam Walsh um, yeah. on the weekend, and then uh, maybe Merritt this week, it probably uh, gives him a bit more freedom. Yeah, nice so, Saligo and Rankin are two that I'm watching very closely this week as well to trade in. Um, they, if they both keep those mid rolls, <laughs> that was an oof. <laughs> mm. That was an oof. For those uh, listening to the podcast, I don't have him in my team, but because again, idiot. Uh, Sarong in the derby, mm. so he doesn't mind a massive, massive score against West Coast. He had 140 plus. I He's think, won a couple of uh, Ross Glenn getting medals, I think, in the That's cabinet it. already. So he's an interesting one for Saturday night as well. Don't mind that. Uh, could just go huge. We know what about Luke Ryan? You have to think about him too, and yeah, that might have been Luke Ryan. <laughs> But Sarong, just to be honest, I kind of hope that he has a rough one so I can get him in at some point because, jeez, struggle town. Anyway, uh, let's do some quick fire round, shall we? Sound good, Al? Sounds, what was your, what was your final vice-captain-captain captain combo? Um, I'm going to go Bont VC into hoping I don't have to use the C. Nice. Very smart. <laughs> All right, quick fire round. Sam Walsh, Sam Flanders, or Hayden Young? Patch. Uh, Flanders, because he's the one that I've got. <laughs> Stupid, sexy Flanders. Stupid, sexy Flanders. I feel like I'm going to go Walsh. Hopefully he's I... not scoring nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to go Walsh before I go back to Young just because I don't want that humiliation on my record. Al? Uh, I like Flanders as well, just on the back of, I think Finn McGuinness did start following him around on the weekend. I thought, oh, this could be the week he drops a poor score, but it's still turned up. So uh, very reliable. But Hayden Young probably has to be back on the uh, shopping list. Three scores in a row over 120, which is what we thought we were getting at the start of the year. So... Um, yeah, that's right up there with the top defenders. Yeah, it's what Phantom promised us, and it just it took a little while to come. A little while to be delivered. <laughs> All right, two guys. We're around the 626, 30,000 mark. Jack Steele or Isaac Heaney? Go to you, Patch. <laughs> both. <laughs> both. Why not both? Why for Quenella does. <laughs> um, is this to bring in or to captain or to... If you could only have one. I... Uh, I He's speechless. I love both, this. Both. Both. I'm both. pulling it a draw. Can't nice. we just pick the player that has the most fun, which is both of them? Well, I've already got Heaney, and I don't think I'll have a, enough to do any sort of steel move, so I've got to go the Heaney. What about you, Al? Did, have we revisited our receipts from last week? We're about to. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Jack Steele, massive again. Um, probably a little bit more confident in him sort of producing at that level for an entire season just because he's done it before. And Heaney, I mean, you can't knock anything Heaney's done so far, but if you had to split them... Maybe I'd have Steel just ahead. Interesting. Top three falling primos that we're looking at to bring in. We've got Bont, who's actually dipping a little bit. Petrarca, the same sort of vibe. Tinglish, Tim English, Tom Green. We've got Stewart, LDU, Dawson, Oliver, Dugowie. What are the top three you're looking at there, Patch? Uh, Bont and Pally's top of the list because he's very good at football. Um, and, you know, as you said, Ali, he doesn't have many bad games. So if you miss him when he drops once... 
you might not get another crack at him. Um, Petrarca, very interested in um, because he'll be dipping just as DPPs kick in. So we can start flinging players around and bringing in guys in the midfield. And then Tom Stewart is just a tasty option down back um, who I'll be keeping a very close eye on. That's one, Al. Yeah, I have Stewart in my top three as well, just because like I don't think he's been going that bad. I think he's averaging about 104, and he still managed to slide about 50, 60K, and he's got a high break even again this week. So, yeah, he'd be a nice little uh, guy to sort of finish off your defense or close to it back there. But I think Tim English, if um, people don't have him, he's the one who's really coming down in price. Uh, lost about 60 grand on the weekend. He's got about a 200 break even now. So... Uh, sort of, I think, rewarding people who maybe held Grundy or if you went to a meek, I mean, he was okay on the weekend, but he might just make a little bit. And then in two or three weeks' time, I think we could get English for maybe 600000 or something, which would be a fantastic result given how well he started the year. And Petrak is the other one I'm really keen on. The timing is just going to be tricky on him because uh, Melbourne has the bye this week, obviously, and then coming off the bye, he'll have a very high break even, and ideally you'd want to wait a week or two for that price to come down. But in round seven, Melbourne plays Richmond, which yes. is probably a good week to bring him in. Yeah. Checks out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, yeah, look, I'm just all over the bond. Look, the big question for me is like Grundy to Tinglish. Like, do you pull that pin at some point? I feel like you almost have to if you have the opportunity to. And then I'm, you know, fingers crossed we actually get there. Uh, the Stewart one as well. Like, just like that's my top three. Cause like I started the season much the same vein as with the bond of like, they'll drop in price and then I'll get them. <laughs> and it's, Round six, and I'm like, they'll drop in price, won't they? It's going to happen at some point, so that's where I'm at. Uh, The Bevo Sublotto, who gets the vest this week? Who gets Bevoed? Patch, what do you reckon? Uh, Marcus Bontepelli. Nice. (laughs) Maybe maybe Luke Beveridge himself. Maybe he just breaks the fourth wall a bit (laughs) and puts himself on the bench. I don't Uh, don't know. Who could possibly say? Not me. Can he play Tim English as, you know, fullback? Caleb Daniel comes into Ruck. Like this. We're just going to go full crazy. Al? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a complete uh, shot in the dark. I mean, it'll probably be Buku Kamas because he's been just humming along nicely in my uh, forward line, ready to get DPP. Nice little uh, rookie earning some cash for me, so he's probably going to cop it at nice. some stage. All right, it's a game of names, a couple of names for us. Uh, receipts from last week. Al got a win. It's about hey. time. Hey, woo. Like, <laughs> you know, even a broken clock's right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> which is just very rough because he's been pretty close on a couple of these. Uh, you almost doubled me up as well. So yeah. Jack Steele versus Tom Green, Huge. 143 to 72. Jeez. And they had, I think it was, uh, still had 29 touches and Green had 24. So it was just uh, the damage that he did with them. Efficiency matters, I'd say. Uh, so that I think leaves you one and four after the five weeks. So not bad. The, come, on. the comeback is on. <laughs> uh, so what are we predicting head to head this week, Al? What were the names that you were going to throw out there? Well, yeah, I thought uh, another... Uh, Thursday night head-to-head. So I'm throwing Jack Steele in there again, but versus the Bond. So they'll be, um, you know, two potential VC options against each other on Thursday night uh, under the roof at Marvel. I have to back in Steele again, don't I? After you do. The way he's been going. I do like the Bond. I think he'll go well, but Steele maybe just to get him by a couple of points. I love this. Look, I just don't trust St Kilda as far as you can throw them, and I just don't want to sit. Like, they could very easily also just <laughs> throttle the life out of this dog's team, and, like, suddenly Bond has a... Barry How can Crocker he trust sh- the dogs, though? I mean, exactly. That's the tricky part. So yeah. they could, he could have a Barry Crocker shocker, but his track record's amazing. I'm going to back in the bond. Back in the bond. Why wouldn't you? Uh, right. There you go. Boost or no boost? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Are we doing our? Do we do Tuesday trades anymore? Now that it's uh, well, this is Monday, Monday so we're going to do Monday moves. But before we do that, you're going to boost or not? What do you reckon, Patch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, <laughs> yeah. I'm very indecisive. It's Monday. I haven't had time to coalesce my thoughts yet. But I, at this stage, the the manic Sunday night trades did involve a boost, right. and I suspect with the amount of cash and offer from rookies this week, you'd you'd want to be using a boost to get them in. Nice one, Al. What do you think? If I can get it done without a boost, I'll try and keep them in my back pocket. But yeah, the temptation, as you say, with some of these rookies sort of hitting the wall. And uh, a few really good ones to bring in. You could do two of those and then make a bunch of cash and then use a boost for the third trade to try and grab um, whether it's a Yo or a Heaney or, I mean, if you're going to spend up all the way and get a Jack Steele or someone like that. So Yeah, or even if you start saving for someone like Bond, if you start (laughs) stashing away 100K this week and you stash away, you know, 200K next week and you just kind of build that little kitty slowly bit by bit. It's like you've just led me straight to water here, Patch, because I'm going to say no boost for me this week, but my Monday moves... The Monday trade. I feel like I might double downgrade this week just because I'm really struggling for cash. We've still got best of 18 for one more week, right? It's kind of like the one th- one time you might just go, we might better bank a little bit here. So 
my first one, the Sunday Night Rage trade, was like, Sanders, gone. Can't can't deal with the bevoing anymore. But that might not happen. But seriously, just going to Closey and Com- uh, Combin, like that might be my two moves because I brought in Will Graham last week. So um, Cadman or Sexton probably goes out for me as well as maybe Sanders. I don't know. But yeah, without McKercher there, I'm not sure how much money I'm going to be able to make because it might be, if I don't move on from Sanders, it's, I'm stuck with like, you know, trading out Jai Clark and not making any money out of it. So I don't know. What about you, Al? Monday moves? I uh, banked a little bit last week from the closey move. So I think I'll get rid of Jai Clark, um, just doing absolutely nothing for me in the midfield. So I'm bringing Will Graham. Again, it's kicking the can down the road again. I was going to, I thought, well, finally, this is the week. I'm going to have to get rid of Nick Caulfield. But the way Clark's going, I might get rid of him first and, Hopefully the week after that, I've got uh, maybe Biggie Newen in mind in the forward line and can swing a, a Buku Kamas back to defence, and that's when I'll finally uh, wave goodbye to Caulfield. But Clark to Will Graham, that'll leave me with about two hundred grand in the bank, and then it's a question of do I just get Combin in and just you know bank a bit more money and like you say just sit on it for a couple of weeks and then when your Petrarca or your English are coming down, that's the time to to cash in, or do I just go all out now and trade someone like Matt Crouch? So my early move, I'm going to. Do this, and then we'll see whether I follow through on it. Yeah. But if you put that money on top of Crouch, who's not playing this week, I mean, it's best 18, so you'd probably hold him for a week, but he's not getting as much time in the midfield anyway. Maybe now's the time to get rid of him. Could bring in a Zach Merritt. Ooh. Could bring in a Matt Rowell. Ooh. Both have very juicy fixtures coming up. Both uh, look like they're going to be really top scorers in the midfield this year. Very tempting on a Monday. Ooh. Patch. Who would you recommend out of those two? I I mean the the scarf I'm wearing says mm. merit, but I do love some Matty Rail action. He's so good to watch, so good at football. Yeah, it'd be fun um, to own. I feel. Yeah, I I don't think you can go wrong with either of them if that helps. Um, but yeah, I feel like I should be stumping for my boy Noah Anderson here at this point. I'm like I'm I'm like the Noah Anderson believer over here. He scored 155 on the weekend. I love wow. him. He's fine and doesn't eat grass <laughs> He's and isn't a ginger. <laughs> Says the self-hating ginger over here. All right, Patch, what's your Monday move? What do you got for us? Uh, Heaney in. How is this happening? I, j- j- yes. <laughs> <laughs> Heaney's come happened. in. I, I stashed away 250K last week, um, getting closey in and just making a few moves there. So I've got the cash. I can go McKercher out. We'll Graham in. Um, someone in the forward line will become Heaney. And then there was just enough cash left over to get Jai Clark to Combin as a third trade. Um, to really get some cash uh, just hurtling along. Maybe I'd save some. Maybe I'd look in the distance and see that that Marcus Bontepelli falling off a cliff slowly in terms of price and just go, or oh, maybe I maybe I hold off and trade in someone who's not Heaney and just pray that, you know, the returning Sydney guys mean that he's going to play full forward again. <laughs> Despite not believing that in the slightest, I just shut my eyes and hope blindly and trade in someone at 550k and then or go straight to Taylor Adams and bank the cash and then hope that upgrading my team faster means that it's going to make up the difference to not having Heaney to the point where he starts plummeting in price himself because he's... This sounds like a lot of (laughs) rationalisation. I I will go Heaney because I can't (laughs) cope with not having him anymore. I just can't do it. Even though he's... I think he might be overpriced for what he's going to produce for the rest of the year. He's also hurt me so badly. (laughs) So this badly. is this is just the exact moment where Heaney falls off a cliff. Somebody it? stop yeah, me talking, amazing. please. <laughs> all right, that's it for the round six preview. Thank you, Patch. That was good. Uh, remember to dig into all things Supercoach, Twitter, YouTube, IG, TikTok, all the good stuff there. Uh, rate the show with Spotify. Sign up to Supercoach Plus. Uh, check out the Phantom's Lair as well. Is that coming up this week still, Al? What do you reckon? I believe the Phantom is going to dial in from wherever he is on uh, vacation. So, yep. The nice. Phantom's Beach. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Phantom's Beach, it's actually just he's, just, you know, throwing some sand over the apartment floor and away we go. Uh, and for all the insights you need, of course, smash code sports.com.au. And for all the latest news and fun gear, check out AFL Today. That's a good show too. All right. Thank you, Patch. It was great to have you back again for week two. Thank you, James. And thank you, Al. As per usual, you do a great job. I thank you very much. I will enjoy Richmond's buy this weekend. Nice. There's nothing better than a buy when your team just like had a bit of a downer. You're like, oh, needed that. There you go. And we've got, uh, yeah, the demons coming out the other side, so... Good times. Tough gear. All right. And thanks to Dan Bat for jumping on too. And in between all of that, just remember, happy super coaching.